This is Twit. George, tell us about this adventure tuner kit that Eisenberg told you about. It comes from soda beams over in the UK. And so I, I guess you would consider this maybe an import. I don't know, but uh, it went together real quick. <laughs> it's a QRP tuner, of course, and you wouldn't want to run a lot of power to it. I think maximum is 20 watts, but it's real simple to build. It's a little L network tuner, and we didn't have time to cover uh, the testing of it this week. We're going to do that next time. And, uh, well, let's just take a look at it. This week on Smoke and Solder, we're going to build a nice little simple kit that came from sodabeams.co.uk. It's the Adventure Tuner kit, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The Adventure Tuner is a QRP L network tuner with a difference. The network is bi directional. Both sides of the L network can be used for the antenna or the radio. It's got BNC connectors for coax on both sides of the network, so it can be used with coax fed antennas or wire antennas with screw-down binding posts or 4mm banana plugs. Hyperbright LEDs indicate antenna current to aid you in tuning. Rated at 20 watts peak, 10 watts continuous, the typical matching range of the Adventure Tuner is 3.5 to 30 megahertz. The first step is optional. If you'd like, you can paint the legends on the box. It's covered with a paper overlay and the legends have been engraved into the box. We can use an acrylic paint and fill these holes, let that dry for 24 hours, and we should have a nice looking kit. Before we begin filling the engraving with paint, we should put a piece of paper over the top here and use our thumbnail to press down around the letters to make sure that the paper overlay has been firmly seated to the board. I'm going to use a blunt pencil for this. We should use acrylic paint to fill in the etching, and I picked up some at Walmart. They say that you should take a plastic spatula and fill in the holes with that. Well, I don't have a plastic spatula, so I'm going to use a razor blade and hope for the best. I'm going to use a Q-tip to fill in the lettering, then we'll use a razor blade and kind of squeegee it off. Now, we need to let it sit for 24 hours and dry thoroughly. 24 hours has elapsed now, and it's time to peel off the paper liner. It comes off pretty smoothly. There will be a few places left where the paper had gotten disconnected, where there were holes in the pattern, and I'll take an X-Acto knife and pull the other pieces off. Now, that's a very good-looking panel to me. I think they did a good job of engraving it. Now the kit doesn't come with a manual like so many kits today, but they give you a little slip of paper with a link on it here where you can download the PDF file. I'm going to put all the parts here in a box so that I don't lose any of them, and it's pretty much what you would expect to find in a tuner of this style. So let's get started building. The first thing we do is mount all the hardware, and we begin by mounting the six switches. Now we'll put on the BNC connectors, and we make sure that we put on the lock washer first on the rear, then the solder tab, and then finally the nut to hold it together. After we put on the BNC connectors, we move to the banana jacks. We put the large washer on the rear first, followed by one nut. Then we put on the solder tab, followed by a small washer, and then another nut. After all that, it's time to mount the variable capacitor, and there are two screws that hold it in. There's also an extender for the shaft that needs to go on. They say to put some epoxy on the threads and the extender so that it won't come unlocked when you're twisting the knob. I don't have any, so I'm going to use my favorite 3M weather strip adhesive. Everything you can mount with the screw now has been installed, so it's time to put on the LEDs. For this, we're going to use a little hot glue to hold them into place. Now it's time to wind some toroids. And since there's eight of them, I'm only going to do one here on camera to show you how it's done, and then you can wind the rest on your own. There are two sheets in the manual that you should print out. One gives you a table of all the toroids, the core type, which is marked by color, the length of wire you're going to need to wind it, the number of turns, and it also shows us what the inductance will be. They're thinking you're going to sit down and wind all the toroids at once, so they've given you a sheet of paper here so that after you wind them, you can tape each toroid to it so that you don't get them mixed up. I'm going to begin by winding number one here, 
and we can see it takes a T50-10 core, which is black, and we're going to need 19 centimeters of the shellac covered wire. Each time the wire passes through the core is considered one turn. And we're going to put six turns on this one right here. We need to leave three centimeters hanging out the end. So let's wind six turns. If you're going to count these later, you count them on the inside of the core, not on the outside. Once you've done all the windings, you take them and spread them out evenly around the core so that you're taking up about 80% of the core. Now we're going to tape it down to the sheet and go on to the next one. Boy, that's a real thing of beauty, isn't it? Shazam. All those toroids already laid out and ready to go. So now we get to do a little bit of soldering. We thread a piece of wire through all the bottom terminals of the switches, and then we solder them. And now we cut the wires between each of the switches, leaving just the contacts on each switch connected to each other. And now we'll slide another wire through the center terminal of all the switches. The left end of this wire will be connected to the red binding post at the top left, and the right wire will be connected to the right red binding post. After we've soldered all those connections, we cut the wires out between the terminals on each switch. So the switches are connected together, but the terminals on the switches themselves are not. We'll take another piece of wire and solder it to the solder tabs on the BNC connector ground, as well as the right hand bottom or the black binding post. That binding post might be green in some kits. Then the wire will be bent across the top of the switches, not touching them, and connected to the center post of the capacitor. We do the same thing on the left hand side and bend that wire over where it contacts the center post of the capacitor as well. We'll connect another wire between the two outer terminals of the capacitor and bend it up and connect it to the left red binding post. Now we'll check all the solder connections on the tuner and be sure that none of the wires are bent touching each other. All of that looked okay, so now we'll solder one lead from each LED over to the bottom or the black or green binding post. It doesn't matter which wire from the LED is connected. And now it's time to mount some toroids. We'll begin with toroid number one. We use one of the nylon screws to affix it right here over the right hand switch and the two leads will connect to the two terminals down there on the switch. We'll need to tin this first with a soldering iron to remove some of the shellac off of the wire so that it will solder to the switch. Next, we'll install toroid number three, not number two, and we'll connect it the same way. And the same thing with toroid number five. Now we'll do toroid number two, and it'll go between toroid number one and three, and it's connected to the second switch from the right. Following suit, we install toroid number four and number six the same way. To mount these three toroids, we'll hot glue them to the ends of the nylon screws being careful that they don't touch the toroids below. We've still got two toroids left though, numbers seven and eight, and those are used for RF sampling. We'll connect a wire from the top red terminal on each side, and we'll feed that wire through a toroid and connect the other side of the wire to the positive pin of the BNC connector. One lead from this toroid is connected to the bottom black or green binding post, and the other lead is connected to a 330 ohm resistor on over to the remaining lead of the LED. We do the same thing to the other side of the tuner. To hold all this in place, I'm going to use a little hot glue to center the toroid over the wire that it's sampling. Now our tuner's complete. We should go through and check all the solder connections carefully to make sure we have no cold solder joints and also check the wires in here to be sure that none are unintentionally touching anything conductive. And here's our completed tuner kit. It looks great. We've got binding posts here for connecting balance lines, and we've also got BNC connectors for coax or unbalanced rigs or antennas. Now we've run out of time for this episode, but next time we're going to test this out and see how it works. If you'd like to build an adventure tuner yourself, check out sodabeams.co.uk. And that was a lot of fun. I'd encourage you, if you're into QRP and need a tuner, to check that out because it's real simple to build. goes together pretty quick if you just sit down and build it. If you're shooting video while you're doing it, it's going to take you all weekend. 
I ended up with a little over two hours worth of video to cut down into 10 minutes there, but uh, I had a great time doing it.